Hello friends, welcome back to a new video. Today I will be reading to you Unicorn Island, The Secret of Lost Luck, book four. I have done the other three books on um, uh, Read With Me, and you can go find that, those books now if you haven't read them. And uh, let's get into this book. Unicorn I Island, The Secret of Lost Luck, book four. Unicorn Island, The Secret of Lost Luck, book four. Chapter 8. Inside the hut, a man bent over a fire bowl, a fire, a bowl in his hands. Uncle Mitch, Sa Sam ran as fast as she could, happier than she could have imagined to see her grumpy uncle. He looked tired but unhurt. The unicorns outside the hut whined and tore up the ground, but they let her pass. As she entered the hut, she saw that Uncle Mitch was bent over a baby unicorn lying on a bed of leaves, its tiny body struggling to breathe. Uncle Mitch jerked up his head when he heard her come in, then rushed to set the bowl down and meet her halfway with, with one long stride. To her surprise, he embraced her, his his hug big and comforting. He smelled like straw and earth. Sam, how did you find me? He pulled away the 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 tents. He pulled away with a tense look. Shadows from the fire streaking his face. I stayed up all night watching for you to come back across the sea, and f the fog finally lifted to show us the island. Tuck came up behind her. Tuck brought us here in, in his boat. Uncle Mitch blew out a long sky, a sigh, scratching his scruffy chin. I'm sorry if I worried you. I knew the fog clock was running low, but if I'd gone home, this little one would have died. He glanced at the baby unicorn, then peered down at the children. With exhausted eyes, he put a hand on Sam's shoulder. I'm sorry I couldn't return. I thought I'd I'd wish you away and you'd be gone forever, Sam said, the words tumbling out. Uncle Mitch smiled and looked kindly at her. I don't blame you for wishing that. I'm sorry I yelled at you. He put his other hand on Tuck's shoulder. Both of you, thank you for coming. Tuck smiled shyly. Uncle Mitch knelt by the baby. I, baby's unicorn side. Barlock is very Barlock is very sick. He was born last night and he hasn't been able to stand yet. You named the unicorn? Sam asked. Yes, it. Yes, a name is very. A name is important. He placed a hand on the creature's neck, stroking it softly. Barlock means strong warrior filled with hope. It's what the island needs. A, a grown unicorn approached the front of the hut, rushing to rub the horn, ru rushing to rub horns with Barlock, and da and then dashing away. And that's Barlock's mother friend, Trud. She's very upset because Barlock's mother died last night while giving birth to him. Uncle Mitch bent. Uncle. M Uncle Mitch bent his head to the baby unicorn. Only one unicorn is born every century. They live a long time. Barlock, mo Barlock's mother has gone too soon. And are the horns and tails in your hidden room from all the uni all, from all the unicorns died? Sam asked. Yes, he said, listening to Barlock's chest. When a unicorn dies, it fades away, and all that remains is its horn and a lock from its hair, a hair from its tail. I inherited what I inherited the ones you saw from the fog keepers before me. Barlock chuffed in distress. I miss you. I miss your mother too. A voice spoke inside of Sam's head. Barlock stained to lift his head and gazed into sam's eye how can how can you know that sam thought staring into his deep violet eyes we sense all within and are born with with the memories of our ancestors i'm sorry your mother won't come back sam thought 
Don't fear, yours will. Sam shrugged. I know she will. I'm not afraid of that. Your real mother, I mean. Barlow dropped his head and closed his eyes, his words leaving Sam stunned. What had he meant? How could he know anything about her family? She wasn't sure what to think or believe. While her thoughts raced, Uncle Mitch began singing softly to Barlow. A long time ago, you beheld magic from a sky and star, while embracing green and sun, and all that is pure. We wished, we wished to believe, but all not see what you are—a beauty and kindness that can forever endure. Help me now, keep you safe and strong, so forever on earth we may live without fear and wrong. Sam knelt beside him. Her heart filled with wonder. Mom had been right. They both had gone off to to have adventures. Sam just wished she could share this with her. Sam just wished she could share it with her now. Barlow's heart is racing too fast. Uncle Mitch said, smoothing down the unicorn's mane. Mane. He can't breathe deeply because of it. Song soothes him some, and him some. I've made him a drink of sparkling stream water, starlight berries, and crushed melody plant leaves. It should make him stronger, but he's not getting any better. Tuck knelt too. Are unicorns like horses? He he asked. Uncle Mitch nodded a little. I know a little about horses from my mom. Grooming them lowers their heart rate and calms them down. You're a smart boy, Tucker. Uncle Mitch said, "Quick, grab that big that big brush in the corner and help us." Sam got the brush and handed it to Tuck. He began gently gro-、uh, he began gently grooming the baby unicorn. Its breathing calmed a bit. Uncle Mitch retrieved his bowl and placed placed it by the unicorn's head. Lift, lift his head, Sam. Barlow sipped. Sip the drink. His pearly horn reflecting flames from the fire. Then closed his eyes. Trod re- Trod returned, folded her legs and laid and laid beside him, their horns touching. Can unicorns heal with their horns? Sam asked. They can only heal others, not themselves. Uncle Mitch said. The flying creature who had been circling. Like a lookout, dropped down and curled in front of the hut, like a massive grayscale boulder. He wrapped his long tail around himself and stared at them with bright eyes. Uncle Mitch placed a wool blanket over the baby unicorn. He added a log to the fire and sat against the hut stone wall. Tuck and Sam leaned back against a pile of hay. You must have many questions," Uncle Mitch said, folding his hands in in his lap, gazing intently at Sam and Tuck. Tuck spoke up. "Did you name the dragon too?" "No," Uncle Mitch laughed. It echoed off the stone walls. Dragon names are secret to them. The creature popped his head up with a frown and tapped his tail on the ground. The spine standing up. Also, he's not a dragon. He's a wyvern. The wayward stopped tapping, and and his spines relaxed. He stuck out his tongue at 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 Sam and Tuck as as if to say, "So there, before, so there." Before he settled his head back down, Sam said it out loud slowly, never having heard of such a wi- wi- wyvern, a creature wyvern. That's right, w- wyverns are. Sm- smaller and have two legs. Dragons have four. Uncle Mitch explained the salmon text puzzled expressions. They have sharper teeth and claws, cause they breathe frost, not fire. The wyvern tail's spine shot up ag- again and glared at Uncle Mitch and stabbed the ground with the point of his tail. Oh, sorry, Uncle Mitch said with a. A bow to the wayward. They're also much faster flyers than dragon. The wayward grinned and settled back down with a huff, satisfied. Well, this wayward needs a name.、Uh, name Sam said. She went to the wayward and rubbed, rubbed under his chin. He ch- 
He chittered as if tickled, closing his eyes with a sigh. I'm calling him Verney. He popped one eye, but didn't seem to object. Then he rolled over like a dog, kicking his feet in the air. Sam laughed and scratched his scaly belly. The the unicorn stopped grazing and shook their manes and whinnied as they, if they were laughing too. The night grew colder and Sam and Sam shivered. Uncle Mitch put more wood in the fire and gave her and Tuck a wool blanket. If this baby is not better by sunrise, I'll need you to get back to the mainland and wind the fog clock, he told them. You'll have to hide the island before Foggy Harbor wakes up and sees it. Take the key on the case and put it, um, put it in the hole on the face. Wind it up until the shorthand is on 24 again. Will you do that? Sam and Tuck nodded together. Then both started talking at once, all of their questions tumbling up. Uncle Mitch held up their hands to quiet them. I will tell you all I know. Chapter 9 Sam, Tuck, and Uncle Mitch settled under their blankets, the stars shining down from a clear night sky. When Uncle Mitch began to talk, even Vernie turned his head if he were listening, and the unicorn herd trotted over and stood in front of the hut. Centuries ago, during medieval times, unicorns roamed the earth. However, they were hunted nearly to extinction for their healing powers of horns. My ancestors, Edward Oakes, was a scientist who adored these creatures. He led the unicorns here and created a fog clock to keep the island hidden with, with magic, becoming the first fog keeper to guard the unicorns. The fog clock has been handed down to the generations ever since, until it reached me. He paused as Sam and Tuck digested his story. Unicorn protectors, thought Sam with excitement. What I wouldn't give to what I wouldn't give to be one. Uncle Mitch continued. I wind the clock each day and come here each night to check on the unicorns. He swept his hand out. Werney, as you now call him, happened to be sleeping in the island when Oaks first shielded it. Verney liked the unicorn so much he decided to st- stick around indefinitely. They all looked at Verney, who lifted his head and eyed Uncle Mitch. Could you say he's a second protector too? The unicorns, when I'm not here, he he wears an ancient lock of unicorn hair around his neck as a sign. Verney nodded and flicked his tongue. He sh- he shook a bundle of white hairs on his necklace, then settled back down in the grass, his scales shining silver in the firelight. Unicorns allow us to discover more about the world than we could ever know without them. Uncle Mitch said, gazing at the herd beyond the fire. How? Sam said. He turned to her. They help us believe that magic is real, and in believing, we, we can unleash our own magic potential. He rose, he rose, then checked, and then to check Barlock and, and Sam and Tuck glanced at each other. Sam understood now why her uncle had gotten so angry at them for going into the hidden room. So he wanted to keep the unicorn safe, so did she. The fire popped, sending up sparks. Who's going to guard the island when when you're not a, a fog keeper anymore? Sam asked. Tuck nudged and gave her a pointed glance, but she needed to know. Uncle Mitch narrowed his eyes. I will be a fog keeper for a long time. So no, so no need for a plan for that just yet. Totally, Tuck said, giving Sam a stop asking question look. She ignored him and held her uncle's intent gaze, still needing to know more. What happened to Aunt Sylvie here? He frowned and crossed his arms, the old uncle Mitch returning. She disappeared. On the island? Sam went on, unable to stop. Uncle Mitch frowned deepened. Then his face sagged and 
and he uncrossed his arm. She's gone and will never come back. Did it have something to do with the wondrous and terrible secret? He jerked up his head, wrinkling his forehead and staring across the flames with, at her shiny eyes. With her shiny eyes? At her shiny eyes? Yes. I, I wanted to protect you from it so you didn't disappear too, he said, his words trailing off. I understand, Sam said. Uncle Mitch slumped. You do? You were upset over losing Aunt Sylvie and you didn't want to lose me. You showed it by getting mad, but you still wanted to protect me. Uncle Mitch gave Sam a soft smile and Tuck stopped nudging her. Were you really going to send me away, Sam whispered. I didn't want to, but your mom entrusted me to keep you safe. You're not the worst uncle ever, she said. Maybe the worst cook, he said, cooking cocking his head with a smile. Me too, Sam said. Uncle Mitch's smile widened, but he crinkled his eyes as if something pained him. He hunched back down against the wall. Sam realized they had more in common she than she'd ever thought. It wasn't just about the burning food. We've been mostly alone. We've been, been mostly alone for so long that it's hard to open up to people. The three of them sat in silence watching over Barlock. The fire crumpled to red embers and then to ash. Sam had one more question. What if Barlock dies? Uncle Mitch sighed. A bit of magic dies on the island and that, that opens a window for darker dangers to rise. She and Tuck shared a look. Again with the darker dangers. What does that mean? Uncle Mitch poked the fire as he as if seeking an answer in it, but he didn't respond. What if my mom came here to check on Barlock, Tuck said. She can cure him. I know it. Absolutely not, said Uncle Mitch. We can't risk one more person knowing about this island. Then what if we brought Barlock to her, Uncle Mitch, uh, Tuck asked. And Sam nodded excitedly. Good idea. No, Uncle Mitch said in a flat tone. We cannot take a magical creature from this island. He could die. He could die here, Sam said, raising her voice and throwing her hands in frustration. We wait until dawn, Uncle Uncle Mitch's voice was stern. The meadow grew quiet, in spite of Wernie's snore and the occasional snorts of the unicorns rolling around in their sleep. Sam's eyes kept closing, as did Tuck's. Go to sleep, you two, Uncle Mitch said. I'll wake you... I'll wake you before dawn in a couple of hours. Tuck finally gave in and fell asleep on his side, on her side, on his side. Sam was just about to drift off herself when Uncle Mitch spoke quietly. Sam promised me one thing. She sat up straighter, shivering under her blanket. Uncle Mitch brought an her another one from her chest in the hut's corner. She waited as he covered with it her with it, peering down with a solemn look on his face. If you ever return without me, promise you'll never go across the mountain on the other side of the island. It's not safe. I promise, she said. Uncle Mitch started to stand up, but he took his but he took but she took his hand. I know what it's like to lose someone. I won't abandon you like my bat my dad abandoned me. Uncle Mitch touched her hair. I know your heart, Sam. His voice cracked. You you'd never leave behind someone you love, would you? She shook her head, feeling an ache in her throat. Uh, as she as he held her gaze, to her surprise, he kissed the top of her head before melting into the shadows. She tried to keep her eyes open, but quickly fell asleep to the sound of the sound of the magical creatures breathing all around her. It seemed like Sam had just closed her eyes. Uncle Mitch gently, Uncle Mitch gently shook her and and tuck awake. His face loomed tight and pinched as a lantern swing his hand. Barlock is dying, 
Sam and Tuck threw off their blankets, shivering in the cool air, and went to the baby unicorn. He was struggling harder for breath, his chest shud- shuddering up and down. He coughed and forth foamed forth foamed at his mouth and nose his coat was shiny with sweat we've got to get him to my mom tuck said uncle mitch stood over them hands clenched tuck's right sam said let's go his it's his only chance finally uncle mitch nodded handed the lantern to sam and wrapped barlock in a blanket he then the unicorn whinnied but did but didn't resist they stepped they stepped out into the meadow the unicorn herd stood in a line before them with Wernie sitting in the middle eyes glittering and tail snapping the moon washed over them as the black sky faded to gray and as the stars melted away we will bring him back no matter what i must do Uncle Mitch said to the herd, Save one, save us all. Their voices called in Sam's head. I'll do my best, I promise. She thought, We we expect you will, Samantha Sewells. Weighed by the trust they had in her, she, she bowed to them. The unicorns parted for them, and they took off a... They took off at a canter through the meadow and into the woods, back toward the beach. Verney flew overhead, this time his great big wings shadowing them from above. Blue lightning bucks jashed out if to help, if to help speed them along in a gentle in in the gentle breeze. The plants waved their leaves in you. Unison. Hurry, there's not much time, their song seemed to say. Sam and Tuck, Sam, Tuck, and Uncle Mitch had nearly reached the beach when the island swayed beneath their feet. A great go- groan filled the air. Sam and Tuck crashed into one another, stumbling as an as the island rocked. Earthquake, Tuck yelled. Worse, Uncle Mitch yelled back. Running faster, he clutched Barlock to his chest, but another tremor sent him tumbling head along into a tree. He slid to the ground and didn't move. Barlock still in his arms. Uncle Mitch, Sam and Tuck held on to the trees for support as they str- as they struggled to reach him. Once Sam was by her uncle's side, at first her her at her first aid training kicked in mom had made her take the class in case she she ever got hurt while home alone grab barlock she she yelled to tuck startled he did as pulling as she said pulling the baby unicorn from uncle uncle's limp arms the ground shifted again Sam grabbed the tree trunk to stop herself from falling sideways. Then the tremor passed. She knelt by Uncle Mish and checked to see if she was breathing. Her chest, his chest is moving, she said. Relieved, help me lay him flat, Tuck. Tuck placed Barlock on the ground, and together they moved Uncle Mitch's slump body. He was so he was resting on his back. The ground seized beneath them, knocking Sam and Tuck into each other. Wake wake up, Uncle Mitch. Oh, please wake up, Sam wished out loud, picking up Barlock and cradling him in her arms. He whimpered, and then he was quiet. The ground finally stilled. Uncle Mitch coughed. He shuddered and coughed, and then coughed again. He opened his eyes, focusing on Ta- Sam and Tuck. What happened? You got knocked out, Sam said. Her uncle sta- s- sat up groggily and touched the back of his head. It it hurts, but I'll I'll be all right, he said. Sam heart slowed, but but then the earth began to pitch again. We've got to get off the island. We got to get off the island. Uncle Mitch said he stood up unsteadily and took off down the path. Uncle Tuck and Sam holding Barlock followed the burst the burst out onto the beach. Waves rose and crashed on the shore. Tuck's boat was gone. 
in a speck in the distance carried out to sea. Verney landed, landed beside them and immediately fell on his side as the ground shook. He screeched, flapping his wings to get up uh, and blowing out a big breath that froze the arose of trees. We, we can't fit all on my boat. Fly home, Verney. Fly home on Verney. Uncle Mitch urged his wild, his wild, Uncle Mitch urged his wild eyes. He he took Barlock from Sam. Wind, wind the fog clock and get Mel to get get Mel to meet us at her clinic. Fly on a dragon, Tuck gulped. Verney roared roared out frosty clouds, and tap and tapped Tuck's head with his elbow, sending him flat on his butt in the sand. Verney, Sam corrected, Ver- Vervin, Sam corrected, helping him up. They clung to each other as the sand rocked up their feet. Uncle Mitch was all- is all right. We've got no choice. Mom will kill me for losing the boat, Tuck moaned. I think she'll be more than upset about you flying on a wavern. Sam said. The groaning of the island grew louder, drowning out her words. Tuck nodded with wide eyes. Uncle Mitch placed Barlock in his boat and then untied it. Sam hugged her uncle hard. He squeezed her back and practically fell into the and practically fell into the boat at, as the island shuddered. Hurry now. I'll meet you at the clinic, he said, as Tuck and Sam pushed the boat into the sea. Uncle Mitch rowed away, plumping his arms fast, waves slapping the boat. Sam feared she'd never see him again. Be strong. We need you, Barlock's voice spoke in her head. I need you too. And Sam realized how true it was. The unicorns given had given her a purpose. Given her purpose, Verney flattened his back and wings on the beach, offering the kids a ride. Sam took the first step and climbed on top of the wavern. His scales were soft. He smelled like salt and pine. Tuck swayed on the f- sand, his face pale and, and fading in the fading moonlight. Sam held out her hand, just like riding a horse. He choked out an awkward laugh and took her hand, climbing up to sit in front of her. They lifted off to the uh, off over the sea. The brisk tail wa- t- tail wind helping them along and soared toward home. Tuck grasped every time he t- he looked down, riding a wavering scary. But I'm more worried about your un- what your uncle Mitch said. What could be worse than an earthquake? Earthquake on an on the island. I have no idea, Sam said, as she glanced at the choppy water far below her. The sky grew lighter. Faster, Verney, Sam whispered. No, not faster, Tuck called out, hugging her waist. Verney, Verney crackled and sped up, shooting across the sea like an, air, like an arrow. They zoomed over Uncle Mitch. His boat pressed Pressed against the dark waves below, he lifted his hand in a, in in greeting. They left they left him behind as and soon landed on the beach in front of his house. Tuck and Sam slid off. Goodbye, Verney. Thanks for everything. The Vern the Wavern the Wavern bowed then bent his head, shaking his necklace. I think he wants you to have his unicorn necklace, Tuck said. Verney nodding with a grin, tapping Tuck's shoulder with with a wing. Sam gently lifted the necklace off Verney, clutching it into her hand. I'm a unicorn. Pro- I am a unicorn protector now. She hugged Verney. I hope I get to see you again someday. Verney sniffed with a tilt of his head. Then smiled and lifted off, flying toward the rising of the sun and Unicorn Island. Come on, Tuck, Tuck, Sam said. Sam slipped the necklace in onto her pocket, then, then ran up the stairs to Uncle Mitch's house. Tuck began, Tuck sat, 
ran up the stairs to Uncle Mitch's house, tucked right beside her. They they quickly found the fog clock back to full and headed toward Tuck's house. Now, now we have to tell my mom that unicorns are real, Tuck said as they ran down the street. She'll believe you, Sam said, breathing hard as she pushed her exhausted legs to move faster. She'll have to once she sees Bar look. She nodded. He nodded, glancing at the sea and skidded to the stop. Sam, look! The fox blanket slipped down over the island, hiding it once more. The wondrous secret was safe for now, but they still had a baby, uh, the the baby unicorn. They still had to save the baby unicorn. All about waverns. As Sam and Tuck discovered, unicorns weren't the weren't the only things living on the island. It was also home to Verney, a friendly. A friendly Verney Wavern who helps the kids uh, and even protect and even uh, and even protects the unicorns too. Waverns are ma- mythical creatures who have appeared in stories for hundreds of years. The main difference between waverns and dragons is that waverns have only two legs, but Verney, as they're also um, often smaller and don't breathe uh, fire. Today, waverns appear in books, movies, and video games, and sometimes they pop up on flags and crests as as mascots for sports teams. Even the word wavern comes from a Latin word that means viper. From his soft scales to his long tail, t- to his long tail, Verney slightly resembles as a snake, but that that's kind. But that that's kind, not poisonous, and very protective of his friends. Okay, guys, this is the end of the book. You will find out. Will Tuck's mom be able to save Bar save Barlock? Find out in Unicorn Island Secret of Lost Luck like Book Five. That book will be coming out soon, and um, please be ready for more books. And please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.